Revealing Katie Holmes' constrained life under Tom Cruise's shadow it is often said that behind the doors of every house lie unpleasant secrets, and perhaps even the family of one of Hollywood's biggest stars is no exception. After nearly six years of marriage with no signs of a rift in June 2012, Katie Holmes, the young wife of famous action star Tom Cruise, suddenly filed for divorce in New York court and moved with their daughter Surrey to another apartment. Still in shock, the media and fans hurriedly and frantically searched for the reasons behind the breakup of what they had always called a model marriage. Two weeks before filing for divorce in court, Katie Holmes and her daughter Surrey still made the effort to visit Tom Cruise on the set of the movie, Oblivion, in Iceland. Paparazzi even captured images of the famous couple holding hands while strolling down the street. However, upon closer inspection, Tom Cruise looked as perfect as ever, much like when he is in front of the camera, whereas Katie Holmes appeared visibly tired and somewhat forced. At that time, no one would have dared to suspect that their relationship was on the verge of collapsing because the couple had even rented a presidential suite at the Hilton Hotel for £600 per night to enjoy a luxurious family reunion. Then, the next day, June 17th, which was Father's Day, Tom and Katie together took their little daughter to the upscale and cozy sushi samba restaurant to celebrate. Not only that, many witnesses of the family gathering expressed admiration for the small family's happiness as the famous parents continuously gazed affectionately at their beloved daughter and then turned to smile at each other. On June 18th, Katie and Surrey flew back to the US while Tom stayed behind to finish his work with the film crew. Yet, just over 10 days later, Katie Holmes quietly filed for divorce in New York court, demanding nothing more than full custody and guardianship of their six-year-old daughter. While Tom was still in Iceland, completely taken by surprise and unprepared for the situation of being abandoned by his wife, Katie quickly moved out of the family's luxurious mansion with Surrey to a discreet apartment in Manhattan. Strangely enough, all these actions seemed to have been carefully planned and arranged in advance, from the timing of filing for divorce, making it public with the press, to renting a new home. Everything seemed more like an escape than an impulsive outburst, typical of Hollywood wives. Katie Holmes was only 28 years old when she married Tom Cruise, despite him being almost 45 at the time. Back then, people likened Katie to Cinderella for having the luck of catching the eye of the action film hero who was at the peak of his career, with more than enough money, status, and fame. To be fair, although Katie Holmes couldn't match her husband in the film industry, she was still a promising actress, remembered by audiences for her sweet, youthful beauty. Yet, looking at her after five and a half years of being the wife of Hollywood's most powerful man, no one noticed the 16-year age difference when she stood next to Tom anymore. In fact, at times, she even looked older and more exhausted than her husband. While Tom Cruise seemed to become more youthful and dashing at 50, Katie Holmes appeared with disheveled hair, shabby clothes, always carrying bags like a stereotypical outdated housewife. A glance at Tom Cruise's fortune clearly shows that the lady of this household didn't lack the means to take care of herself, to adorn herself with all the world's luxuries. However, everyone understands that women only look beautiful when they are truly happy. So, what reason could there be for a naturally beautiful woman like Katie Holmes to deteriorate so severely? The only answer can be that her married life was not as perfect as Katie Holmes had dreamed before the wedding. Tom Cruise is a devout follower of Scientology, a controversial religion. Although relatively new, this religion has attracted many celebrities, successful and powerful figures in Hollywood. However, Scientology's ideology contains many extreme regulations aimed at controlling the spiritual life of its followers, and Tom Cruise is famously a zealot of the faith. To become Tom Cruise's wife, Katie Holmes had to renounce Catholicism and convert to his faith, undergoing an extremely rigorous catechism course. According to a closed source, even on their honeymoon, members of Scientology were present to monitor the situation. The cruise mansion, which from the outside looks like a luxury hotel, actually resembles more of a headquarters for Scientology on the inside. Everywhere in the house, there are people in black suits, with cold faces and eyes, ostensibly security but more like wardens, monitoring every move of the household and guests. Anyone stepping inside is escorted by these guards from the lobby to the elevator, up to the floors, and even into the specific rooms they need to reach. The house, of course, also has its own chefs and hairdressers to serve and control even the most basic needs of those living there. This constant presence creates an oppressive and cold atmosphere, making Katie Holmes feel like she's living in a gilded cage rather than a true home. Moreover, in this vast mansion, the couple has several private rooms of their own, completely secluded. Everyone knows they share a house but do not share a room. Katie Holmes is really embarrassed about that and doesn't want others to know about their life behind closed doors. But she had to get used to it because there was nothing else she could do, recounted a close acquaintance of the Cruz family. 
Tom Cruise, much like his on-screen roles, is a very strong and decisive man, but often becomes authoritarian and domineering. In their family life, he makes all the decisions, from minor matters like where to dine and vacation to major issues like which schools their children should attend and how they should be raised. In the early days of their relationship, Katie Holmes might have found this trait attractive because she was young, naive, and dreamy. But over time, she grew tired of the passive state, having to follow every command without question. As a woman with a creative mind and boundless energy, she quickly faded under Tom Cruise's shadow. Her acting career also took a severe nosedive. Often, the audience almost forgot she was an actress and only remembered her as the wife of Hollywood's leading man. Any films she wanted to participate in had to be approved by her husband, with the scripts getting his consent. Tom even controlled when Katie could visit her own parents. The stifling family life, being controlled by her husband and the culled down to every small movement, made Katie Holmes exhausted, but she could still endure it because of her love for Tom Cruise. However, once she became a mother, like all other women in the world, her child became the most precious treasure to Katie Holmes, even more valuable than herself. The disagreements in their relationship began over how to properly raise their daughter. Tom Cruise believed that children were like miniature adults and preferred to let Suri do whatever she wanted. In contrast, Katie Holmes felt that her daughter was just a six-year-old like any other child in the world, needing protection, care, guidance, and proper teaching. The growing disagreements about raising their daughter were compounded by the deep intrusion of Scientology into their family life. Previously, Katie Holmes could accept abandoning Catholicism and joining her husband's religion, but she increasingly felt a severe lack of faith, especially as Surrey had to attend a school for young adherents five days a week since she was three. As a mother, she never wanted her daughter to live a life without freedom, being controlled and monitored by a mystical organization like herself. She particularly did not want her young, innocent mind to be filled with the extreme religious ideologies that were terrifying. When Suri turned six, the age at which born members officially joined Scientology, undergoing a ceremony that adherents called awakening painful past life memories, but in reality, it was more like a brainwashing session. The final straw was when Tom Cruise suggested sending Suri to the highest level of Scientology, the Sea Organization, a training school designed to create leaders of the cult. The issue was that this school resembled a harsh military camp. The children would be completely isolated from their families in the outside world for several years, even decades. During that time, what would those young minds be molded into by calculating hands? At this point, more than ever, Katie Holmes needed to act before it was too late, and she chose to abruptly file for divorce in court. But the battle for custody officially began. Would Tom Cruise, the most powerful man in Hollywood, and the cult backing him easily let Katie Holmes and Surrey escape their grasp?